Um, intro. Hello, everybody. Happy Juneteenth, and welcome to another day in the arena. This is Poor Man is Magic, and today we are going to be continuing our climb up through Platinum 4. On Friday, we took a look at a few potential decks that we might want to switch to, but after kind of taking them into uh, the ranked queue, we found that none of them were particularly effective uh, and that they needed a little bit more tooling um, to, you know, be as good as this Boros deck was for us last week. So we are going to continue our climb with poor Manas Boros. Quickly walk through the deck. We have two Swooping Lookouts, a 1-2 Flying Invigilant uh, creature. We have four Kumano faces Kakazan, four Monastery Swift Spears, four Phoenix Chicks, and three Play With Fires. This deck is really based around a go fast, go face strategy. We want to get down some small creatures. We want to buff them up uh, on turn two and three. We want to maybe take out an opposing uh, creature or blocker with a Lightning Strike or a Seismic Wave, and then continue the assault with a Sunrise Cavalier, which is a 3-3 Trample Haster, uh, that when it becomes day or night, uh, you get a 1-1 counter on a target creature. And then also, we have Stoke the Flames on our top end, a 4-mana uh, Convoke spell, which deals 4 damage to any target. We're really hoping uh, to establish a quick board presence, get in a bunch of damage, get our opponent down to maybe 2-5 to five health, and find a way to finish the job before they can establish and stabilize. So without any more ado, let's jump into the gameplay and see if we can continue our climb. Okay, our first game against Malokay. So we have a turn one, lookout, and the mana to pay it. We have our antagonizer, Blazing Crescendo, and our Lightning Strike. This looks pretty good. We are on the draw, uh, which means that if we are facing a turn one mountain or turn one swamp, our swooping lookout is probably not going to make it, but that is the chance we have to take when we are playing at the artisan level. Turn one island. So we'll see if this is a mono blue or if it's something else, but uh, the only real option we have here is our lookout, so that's what we're going to commit to. No bounce effect, which is always a good, good news for us. Turn two planes. And now they have Igonjo, which might hint they are more of a controlling build. Now, one advantage, and the reason that I really like Swooping Lookout in this, is that when we're facing decks, uh, especially control decks, like Azorius Control, uh, that play a lot of Wandering Emperors, you'll notice Swooping Lookout has Vigilance, which means it cannot be targeted by Wandering Emperor. And this can be a very good thing. Now we have a lot of instant speed uh, effects here, so we're going to go ahead, back all. Because we have quite a few mountains and we need a little bit more gas for next turn, we're going to try to go for the Blazing Crescendo and see if we can top deck some sort of pump or creature spell for the next turn. Looks like this is either going to get, yep, negated, which is okay. We want to get those out of the opponent's hand. We have to chew through them somehow, some way, so move on. Uh, so it looks like we are getting a little flooded here. A little, few too many mountains. Essentially the very same thing. Our opponent's stuck on two lands, which is good, which means that if we had another creature, we might be able to establish a little bit more board presence until a sweeper comes. But for now, we're just going to antagonize. If they have a negate, do not. Ooh, they now have the spell that uh, takes out toughness for or greater. Yep, destroy evil. Ooh, you don't see this card a whole lot anymore in the Azorius control. Opponent's still stuck on two, so we'll go ahead and keep playing out our uh, our creatures. Go ahead and Lightning Strike face, bump up our Swift Spear, damage, but now we are out of gas. And this is bad news for us. Uh, we have done nothing pretty much but draw lands. Our opponent has continued to find their own. We'll go ahead, we'll play Swooping Lookout, we'll pass the turn. We really need to hope here that we can find a little bit of gas, either in the form of a Cavalier or a Convoke. Blazing Crescendo, probably our best top deck. Okay, so it looks like we have a Cavalier. We now have an opponent at two white mana sources and four mana total, which means that Wandering Emperor is probably coming down. We need to keep our foot on the pedal, cast what we have. Wouldn't be surprised to see this resolve and then for our opponent to wait until our attack phase to exile it. If that happens. The fact that we kind of ran out of gas here, ooh, dissipate. That is a lot of counter uh, removal for this deck, especially because so many of the mono red decks that are a huge portion of the meta are just running one and two mana spells. I'm really surprised to see three mana counter spells in this deck. Okay, we only have 
one choice here, which is to play our creatures and turn them sideways. See what opponent is to counter these with. Two swift spears on the battlefield, turn them sideways. Yep, that's going to go ahead and be good game from us. They'll be able to stabilize from here and uh, slowly take over with card draw. Go ahead and give this one up. Good game, Malakay. So we are going to make a slight change to this. Because our top end is really around 3 mana, we're going to go ahead and take out 2 lands, going down to 20 mana total. We are going to add back uh, 1 more Blazing Crescendo and 1 more creature. We'll see if there's a nice uh, hasty creature that we haven't thought about yet. We already have our Cavaliers in. Uh, Ronin might be an interesting play here, especially against those control decks. Alright, so I think we will just add one more play with fire to get a little bit of dry. Go ahead and craft that, finish the deck, go back into the game. Okay. On the play against Luigi. Uh, we have a turn one Kumano. It is not super effective on turn two when we don't have any creatures guaranteed. But we do have some potential removal on turn two. We have removal on turn three when Komodo flips and gives us a third, or I guess a fourth land uh, for the Convoke cost. We'll see how this works. It's not the best. I would really prefer having creature, but I also really don't like mulliganing unless it's an absolutely hopeless hand. We'll go ahead and give this a try. Ooh, got the completed Ajani card backs. He's not looking too good. I think there's uh, some sort of uh, black stuff on his face. Turn one Kumano, see what our opponent puts down first. It's going to be a forest, and we have lucked into a spell sphere. I just love it. When a good game plan comes together. We'll attack, see what a turn two they awaits us. Second forest. It's like a Quirion Beast Caller and a mono green deck. Now this isn't something that I've uh, seen a whole lot of lately. It's kind of exciting. So we know that when we play Fateful Absence, we're probably going to go for the Beast Caller. Uh, we also know that we have a Crescendo at the ready. I'm not entirely sure um opponent's going to want to trade for the etching they do that's totally fine we could pump it and save it um but also take out the beast caller now but we do have two really nice removal spells at the ready so i think what we do here is we blazing crescendo after we attack uh we get a little bit more gas for next turn and we uh keep presenting the aggro front Oh, don't do it. There we go. Okay, we'll go ahead and crescendo the Kamano. Put in 8 damage. They're down to 9. And if you'll notice, we have <laughs> a Kumano in hand, which is 1. We have Stoke the Flames, which is 4. Ooh, if they have a 1 mana spell, they'll probably be able to gain a couple life here, which they do. I assume they'll gain some life. This would be an excellent time for our 3 mana. Ugh to face spell we don't get that that's totally okay uh because queer and beast caller uh does require beast caller to die in order to distribute those plus ones uh this isn't going to be as big a deal because uh, etching of kimono will make it exiled instead go ahead we'll pump up our swift spears we will exile the beast caller oh dealt damage oh that's a misreading on my part so it does have two one ones, correct? Curious if they're going to put both on the pack leader. They do. So we'll go ahead and just attack with the swift spear, see if they want to do anything about that. And if they don't, they will trade. Okay, that's a one mana for a one mana spell. So we miss out on our Kumano. This is okay. We do have. Stoke the flames at the ready. And another blazing crescendo. 
So it really depends what comes down this turn. Sousa's many journeys. So that's going to let them play another land and potentially a, another spell. Looks like they might just crack a clue. They do. This gives us an opening now. So we have the Swift Spear. We have our Cavalier. So let's see. So they're going to play down at least one more card next turn. That is going to get them up to 13 if they choose the life from Gallag Readers. We are going to be able to do one, two, three, six damage, get them to five. They're at 13 though, that gets them to seven. We have four damage and a blaze crescendo on top. I think we go ahead and play the Sunrise Cavalier here, attack all, and then hope that next turn they go for a big play, like a five mana spell, instead of trying to multi spell. Oh, they gained three life there. Forgot about the Asusa too. A lot of life gain in the uh, the mono green decks. I see why this is maybe uh, working pretty well for them. Too. So last week when we took a look at the meta, mono red was 20% of the meta. I also saw a lot of uh, posts on several different social media and, and blogs complaining about the, uh, the regularity of the mono red matchups. So I have a feeling people are probably going to start deck teching against that now. That means a lot of low to the ground creatures for mono green. It means a lot of life gain, incidental or otherwise. So they already gained the life. They're back up to 10. They are holding up Mirex or a pump spell. And we have another Blazing Crescendo at the ready. So we're going to go ahead and hold back etching here. We're going to make sure we have the opportunity to go big. They're going to block Swift Spear. So the question here is if we want to take out the Golag Reader to remove some of their life gain, or if we just want to Blazing Crescendo Cavalier and push more damage. I think we want to Blazing Crescendo the Cavalier. That means we'll get to save our Swift Spear. They'll get to gain two life off their Mirex. And we're still holding up our Stoke the Flames for a potential go face. Yep. Ooh, that is perfect. That is exactly what we want to see off the top there. Go ahead and end the turn. So this gives us the chance. Maybe double spell, especially if we draw into another red source. Yep, they just keep drawing, or keep getting that, uh, that life gain. So back up to 8 life for opponent, plus an adaptive, very good. Sarith Viper's Fang, Apt Creatures, Apt Death Touch. That is a very interesting inclusion. 4 mana, 4 power, doesn't really give them a lot of... Hmm. As much board presence as some of the other three and four mana spells would. Kind of surprised to see that. Uh, the toxic death touchy might attacks in. We're not going to go blocking that anytime soon. So this is the point at which we're really hoping we can blow out and surprise opponent. So we have our trampler. <laughs> An opponent knows that we have a couple pump spells in this deck. We have demonstrated that to them already. So what do we do here? So we have four, two. If we save for Convoke, we'll have to keep back our Kamano and our Swift Spear. That lets us play a Blazing Crescendo, which is plus three, and also a Stoke the Flames, which is four. Let's go ahead and just attack with the Cavalier. We'll see if we can catch opponent napping here. They might feel like they have the advantage, but... The upside of our deck is that it can pop up and take them out Ooh, out of nowhere. Okay, so is this going to do it for us? Blazing Crescendo gets them to 5 damage. Another Blazing Crescendo could get them down further. Let's go ahead and see what this does for us. If possible... <laughs> so that is 6, 3, 5... 
They know we have a play with fire next turn. They do not know that we have the Stoke the Flames. Can they get us swinging back is the question. So they can gain two more life from Gallic Readers next turn. They can do three, four, five, six, seven, eight damage next turn. So I don't think we're going to have to worry about dying. It's just the life gain that we're going to have an issue with. I think we go ahead and Blazing Crescendo, and next turn we can play with Fire and Stoke the Flames. So we have a very clear oh, double play with Fire. Oh boy. So we have every opportunity here to go face with some damage. We'll see what opponent does. If they were smart, they would play a small creature here, gain two life, wait, uh, hold the board with uh, their four creatures, and then uh, activate Mirex at instant speed next turn to capitalize on Gala Greeters again. However, they don't know that we have a Convoke spell in hand. They see two play with fires, they see our two mountains, they're probably thinking the most damage we can push through is four, but that would be very, very wrong. We might be able to catch them off guard here. I feel pretty good, but we'll see what, uh, what they play. They could surprise us. Another evolving adaptive. Four mana plus a Murex. See what they want to do with that. Yep, they see the play. They know they're going to be up at 6 mana next turn. If they pass it, it's pretty safe. <laughs> oh, I had an antagonize. So we have a very clear path to victory here. I think because they tapped their Mirex, they know that they want to gain more life. I say we set off the play with fires. We see what they're going to do about this. They Mirex. Ah. Okay, this is going to be GG's Luigi, but we'll let them play this out. Yep. Gain two. We'll take two. Don't need another one of those. Cut off our other play with fire. One of a... Out here. They still have one more there. Lightning strike on top. Looks pretty good to me. Go ahead and stoke the flames. Go face. Auto pay. And see where that gets us. Cross the finish line. Good game, Luigi. On to the next one. Okay. On the draw against a brule. Sounds vaguely French. We have three one drop, hasty one droppers. We have an okay mana base, although we'd really prefer having one of these planes to be a mountain. But we do have a turn to crescendo at the ready if needed. We'll see what we're up against. Uh, we have kind of evasion or prowess to choose from there. But I think this is a good enough hand to go ahead and keep. Opponent comes down with the Blossoming Sands. The other time we saw this, it was the Toxic deck. Ooh, they have the Elspeth Smite playback or uh, card backs. Always a fan of Elspeth. So we'll go ahead, because they're going to have a board presence, uh, we'll go ahead and Phoenix Chick. We did draw a third plane, which is not what we want. Ooh, Spirited Companion. So they are on an Enchantments build instead. And there comes our second mountain. This is actually maybe the draw that saves this game for us. So we know that as soon as they start popping off with their, um, with their enchantments that we're gonna have a very hard time coming back. We do have a little bit of gas in Blazing Crescendo. We do have a little bit of surprise for if they decide to block maybe a one, two with uh, a Calyx or something like that. We'll see what comes down this turn. It's a Calyx, I actually think we're in a pretty good spot because they're going to assume we can't deal with it. It is a Calyx. They put it on Calyx or Spirited? They put it on Companion. Very interesting. Another Phoenix chick off the top. <laughs> we are just guns blazing right now. So let's go ahead and push more damage. Uh, no Jukai Naturalist, which means they aren't going to be gaining life anytime soon. We're going to go ahead and push this through. So we'll see if they want to double block. That would be a silly thing for them to do. That would be even sillier. 
Oh, opponent, please do not do that. Don't... Okay, good. <laughs> I was worried for opponent there. Uh, we are going to go ahead, Blazing Crescendo on our Phoenix Chick. Push through quite a bit of damage, take out a companion. Draw yet another mountain. We have our opponent down to 10 life. So, with 6 mana, <laughs> having been drawn through 11 cards... Ooh, I have a 4, four Calyx. It's not enchanted yet. 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 If they figure out a way to enchant their Calyx and attack in... Audacity on the Wii. That might be one of the stranger plays I've seen. And they're attacking. Very, very aggressive move. Uh, yep. Double, double Weaver. Another Blazing Crescendo. So, we will go ahead and play out a Mountain. Ah, this is a very interesting... voice. I have a feeling if we attack with our Swift Spears, they're both going to get blocked. I don't know if I care about saving them. We're at 16. Which means that we might actually be able to hold off two of their non-tramplers, Blazing Crescendo or Phoenix Chick, get our opponent down to five, and then see what's on top of our library. I think that's going to be the way out of this. If they have removal, so be it. But we want to push the damage and be effective with our turns. Just another mountain off the top. Okay, well, not the best situation for us. <laughs> We've drawn through seven lands in 13 cards. With a 20 land deck, that is pretty poor. But we're still in striking distance. And again, this is really what we want to achieve. We want to get our opponents down to that 2 to 5 life range by turn 3 or 4, so that all it takes is one good top deck to finish the job. But we'll see what opponent ends up doing, and uh, if we have it in us. It looks like they are thinking about going for lethal here. I assume they have an ossification that might come down. They might try to pick off a swift spear. They've moved ooh, to attack phase. Not sure what they're doing with all this open mana, but we will block here. Save one attacker, that's 10 open. Can't think of any instant speed pump spell that the enchantment decks have been playing that would get them up to 16. We'll go ahead and block, see if we've made, a, made an error. Cosmic Rebirth, it's a companion, puts a 1 1 on a thing. An interesting play from opponent. It only gets them up to 11. We only lose one. They can create another token. We draw into a lightning strike, but they have gained the life off of Cosmic Rebirth. So it looks like we have just drawn a few too many lands, but we were very well set up here. So we'll go ahead, attack all, let our opponent have the victory. Say GG's. Yep, that's yet another Judokai. We're going to go ahead and concede. I usually like to let opponent attack all, just in case they have a daily they're trying to hit. Uh, and if they want to take a few too many turns on top of that, then we'll just go ahead and move on to the next one. Okay. We are on the play against Edutico. We have a turn one play with fire, which can let us scry. We have a turn two lightning strike, which will let us deal some damage, and two sunrise cavaliers to back it up. With this hand, I think we'll win against most aggro matchups. But I think this is a very, very poor start against a mid-range or roll deck. I think we have to keep it because we have things to do. But we'll see what our opponent plays on their turn one. Go ahead and play a mountain. We will pass the turn. Opponent comes down with a scoured barons. Really starting to see a lot of these uh, lifelands come in. 
And that, I guess, is also probably a pretty nice deck tech against all of the aggro. So we'll go ahead and continue to bluff that we are mono red. We'll play a Kumano to uh, bolster our Sunrise Cavalier on turn three. And if this is a token deck, Sunrise Cavalier is going to be a very, very good card to have. Looks like they are just on black white for now. We'll play our mountain. We'll play our cavalier, which will come in at a 4-4. Well above a cut down range, but still gets taken out by most other things. Looks like no removal from opponent this turn. The next turn, our Kamano will flip. We can play another Sunrise Cavalier to cost his welcome. So this looks like the token control build. For this, I actually think I'm going to hold back the Sunrise Cavalier. Turn 4, board clear could be in the works. And if it is... Uh, the four mana board wipe that gives us a draw for multicolored. I think we'll just keep that open. We have lightning strike in hand. We have six damage on the board, which will get them down to eight. The next turn, three plus another three, six. And that leaves us one top deck away from winning. So I say go ahead and swing here. We'll keep open all of our removal and go ahead and bolster Kamado. And again, Sunrise Cavalier, whenever day turns to night or vice versa, uh, will give any of our other creatures a plus one, plus one counter. Opponent does nothing there. That is a very good top deck. We'll go ahead, turn ourselves sideways. And there is a play here where if opponent has a Wandering Emperor and tries to exile one of our creatures, we could Fateful Absence, our own creature. Go face with the lightning strike, and then the following turn try to finish the job with a Sunrise Cavalier. That's a pretty cute play, but it would save two life. Yep. It's like what they're going to go for. So we'll see what they want to throw down here. They want to, yep, exile Sunrise. We'll go ahead and Faithful Absence, our own creature. Ourselves. The clue token. Get in for three damage. And we will see what opponent does next turn. So depending on how many things they put on board, we have a Phoenix Chick, which goes face. We have a Lightning Strike, which goes face. We have a Sunrise Cavalier, ooh, which tramples and hits face. They do burn their Wandering Emperor. They put down a 2-2, which draws off both of their Takastya's welcomes. We'll see how quickly they pass the turn here. Nothing yet. We'll lightning strike face. They are holding something open here. This gets them down to two. Any burn off the top would be good for us. Another land is not the worst. So we know that they have removal. We know that next turn they can either wipe the board or start building their board some more. I almost wonder if it would be worth it to keep Phoenix Chick around. Go ahead and let opponent know we're thinking and not just trying to time them out. So if we assume something gets taken off the board here, I think it still makes sense to play out all of our, all of our creatures. It gives us the best chance. It makes them have to have a board wipe or more removal. And it also gives us lethal. We're really relying on top decks at this point, so go ahead and see what happens here. And we do have our clue, which is nice if we draw a land next turn. Go ahead, attack all in. Assume they'll take out the cavalier. Ooh, it is a cut down. And that's game. Hey, not too shabby, not too shabby. Good game, Edutico. That's another pip up in Platinum. All right, so we are going to end our video here. We've made a little bit of progress up through Platinum 4. I will take some time offline to uh, continue our climb, and we'll see where we end up tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining me. If you liked uh, what you've seen, please go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. We are a small channel and could really use a little bit of support, and I would very much appreciate it. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your Juneteenth, and I'll see you in the next one.